this week comes from the book of Acts, the first chapter. They who have an ear to hear, let them hear the word of our Lord. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of the Isle of Wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each one. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in their own native language. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Partheans, Phineas, the Lamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phygia and Pamphylia, Egypt in the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and Polacites, Cretans and Arabs. In their own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. The gospel lesson this morning is from the book of John. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. God adds blessing to this, the reading of his holy word. Thanks. Thanks be to God. God. I'm going to add one item to the announcements that uh, somebody sort of skipped over. She mentioned that uh, at the meeting this week, they said Sparta was getting the best pastor. But she forgot one word. Best pastor available. <laughs> And that's because Janice isn't on the available list anymore because she's already been assigned to another church. So if you put it that way, then we can accept what we all had to say. And to follow up on that, she also forgot any announcements to remind you all that one week from today will be her last Sunday with us. And we are having a special celebration after the service. And we invite and encourage all of you to attend should be a great celebration. We're actually going to be celebrating three different things. We're going to celebrate the great things that have happened at this church due to her ministry in the last five years. Number two, we're going to celebrate that Rob and Janice have managed to survive five years in Sparta <laughs> as part of United Methodist Church. And since every coin has two sides, We'll also celebrate the fact that we managed to survive five years. <laughs> Janice, you have zinged me so many times in the last five years, I was going to get you this last opportunity. <laughs> but all kidding aside, we are not the church we were five years ago. I think everybody here would agree with that. <laughs> we have grown and we have prospered changed, and we're a whole lot better collection of folks today than I think we were five years ago. And Janice, we praise the Lord for your ministry and lots. Oh. Now that I've concluded the first sermon, Janice will do it the second. <laughs> Sparta. How have we 
erected a pavilion, built a labyrinth, and balanced the budget. Just about. <laughs> How have we raised the finances for a new organ, paid off the solar panels, and fixed the roof? How have we filled the sanctuary with new technology and sound and visuals? And how have we, together, done 29 funerals, 9 weddings, 26 baptisms, received 45 new members, and perhaps most importantly confirmed 22? young people. How have we done this? How have we deepened our spiritual experience through silence and contemplative prayer? Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we have done this. And today we celebrate the Spirit's first coming on the, upon the people gathered together. Pentecost is a story that is rich, filled with special effects and power, filled with meaning and significance then and now, and maybe more so than we realize. We call it, for the kids, the birthday of the church when the Spirit fell on the gathered community together. It was so remarkable and so confounding what happened there that the onlookers thought the people were drunk. That was the only explanation. The unexplainable becomes explainable. <coughs> they must be drinking. <laughs> but some say that Pentecost was the realization of the end time. Stay with me. Complete with all the signs that for the Jews marked its coming. Wind, fire, and tongues. Some <coughs> interpret Pentecost to be the second coming of Jesus in a new form. So what is it really? Or what was it for them? The crowds of Hebrew people had gathered for the harvest festival 50 days after Passover. And if you know church history well, you know that we have dated Easter at the time of Passover. In later Jewish tradition, the festival memorialized the giving of the Torah on Mount Sinai when one great flame came from heaven and divided into many parts, one for each nation of the world. Nations and languages that were divided and confused by God's decree, punishment for human pride and ambition seen in the golden calf and the Tower of Babel. And yet here we have the Spirit falling upon God's people, upon everyone from every land where they had been divided and scattered before. And so God is faithful. God's covenant to Abraham was that all nations, all nations, would be blessed through him. And on this day, 50 days after the resurrection of Christ, 50 days after Easter, dated accordingly, the tongues of flame fell on the gathered nations. And the word of God is heard by Jews from every land, and the Jews would have recognized the imagery. They would have known what was happening Luke tells the story to parallel, renew, and reimagine the importance of the gift of the law to the people. Jeremiah's own new covenant had proclaimed that the law would be written on our hearts. No longer will they say, no, the Lord, because the covenant will be written on their hearts. And so it is that John baptized Jesus and told them that one who would, the, one, the one who would come 
We're baptized with water and the Spirit in their own time. And so it is that today the Spirit falls on all people. And year after year, we say it again and again, the Spirit is falling on all people and for all people and all the nations will be blessed. God, please. Some of you know that the Spirit, the Hebrew, Ruah, was wind, spirit, and breath. And we've been breathing over these past few weeks. Early Christian communities in the Middle East spoke of the Spirit as the motherly, regenerating breath and the power of God throughout creation. And in the Hebrew, a feminine word. Now, y'all did not think that I was going to leave without a little shout out to girl power now, right? <laughs> all those things that are upsetting to the people, but all those things that it is so important that we claim and reclaim. Because they were there at the beginning. That same spirit, wisdom, wind, who blew over the face of the deep at creation. When God spoke it all into being. The breath of God who breathed it here. Away, breath into the nostrils of humanity. And gave us the long healing exhale. And the breath of God that blew upon the dry bones of Ezekiel. But her power, the Spirit's power, her origin, role, and function would divide the churches east and west. For those interested in the controversies of the formulation of the Trinity, the east, said that the Spirit came processed like Jesus from God. The Latin West, she came, proceeded from Jesus. Now, if you're still with me, you can see where we might be headed. It's called the Filioque. And so we wonder about her about her power. She is the healing wind, the living water, the cleansing fire. She is the divine dove, the mother bird who births creation and hovers over Jesus at his baptism. And she is, with an olive branch in her mouth, bringing peace and renewal to a broken and divided world. And it is this same spirit who enlivens us, who gives us breath to sing and to meditate and to pray. It is this same spirit that is blowing through the church today, through the denomination today, through us today, birthing ministries out of need and sometimes trauma, communicating imperatives for change in our lives and in history. <coughs> so my question to you this morning is, which way do you need the spirit wind to blow? What do you need from the spirit this morning? How do you need the Spirit to lead you, energize you, motivate you, bring you peace, bring you hope, bring you joy? Ask and breathe, and may it be so. It is the same Spirit that has blown through all our accomplishments at Sparta. It is the same spirit that will blow and lead you into a new moment of ministry. Breathe. Breathe. And know 
that the life-giving force of the earth is within you, working with you, working for you. Amen. Oh,